Joe Biden's foreign policy is unlikely to be different from Donald Trump's. And I think that some of the latest cabinet announcements make that pretty clear. So President-elect Joe Biden has chosen Anthony Blinken as his Secretary of State. Just to give you a little bit of positive background on Blinken before I get into the negative stuff. Blinken, who's 58, has extensive foreign policy experience. Serving as Deputy Secretary of State and Deputy National Security Advisor under President Barack Obama. Blinken began his foreign policy career during the Clinton administration. He worked as Democratic Staff Director for the US Senate Foreign Relations Committee from 2002 to 2008, where he worked closely with Biden. He went on to serve as then Vice President Biden's National Security Advisor. Something that really stood out to me once I heard Blinken's name as a nominee for Secretary of State was his cameo in a Biden campaign ad. And the whole point of this particular Biden campaign ad was to share a very hawkish take on China and essentially accuse Donald Trump of not being tough enough on China, which I think is something that we need to be very aware of moving forward. We should have been aware of it during the Trump administration, but this whole pivot to Asia started under Barack Obama, he kind of bungled it. And then Trump really ramped up the anti-China new Cold War rhetoric. And all of a sudden you see Blinken in this Biden ad where he's also ramping up anti-China rhetoric. And I think that's dangerous. Here's a quick snippet of what that ad looked like. Let's talk about President Trump, China and the coronavirus. And how President Trump failed to hold China to account when it mattered most. Barack Obama and Joe Biden put in place extra safeguards to predict, prevent and deal with pandemics, especially those originating in China. We kept a strong CDC presence on the ground there. We even had an American expert stationed in the Chinese Disease Control Agency to be our eyes and our ears. President Trump dismantled or diminished virtually all of it. He closed the White House pandemic office. He cut the number of CDC experts in China from 47 to 14. He left that key position that was our eyes and ears vacant in the months before the outbreak. In early January, after the outbreak started, the CDC wanted to get into China to get information to protect Americans. China said no, and President Trump didn't push. So I'm not a fan of that kind of rhetoric. And some of you might think like, oh, that was pretty tame compared to some of the stuff we've heard from Donald Trump. But understand what he's advocating for there. We need to have eyes and ears in China. We need to be monitoring China. We need to constantly like spy on China and you know hold them accountable. That's like the underlying message there. But you have to couple that with what Blinken has been doing since the end of the Obama administration, because he actually ended up creating a think tank that's heavily funded by private defense contractors who very much want to continue engaging in all sorts of interventions abroad, who very much have been funding this effort to ramp up new Cold War rhetoric against China. And I'll give you the details on all of that in just a minute. The name of the think tank is West Exec Advisors. Um, but I think that again, this is some more foreshadowing, um, you know, into the foreign policy that uh, the Biden administration is likely to pursue, and that makes me worry. Yeah. Cenk. So normally, when we tell you about the difference between Biden and Trump, uh, we say, look, we got to give you proper context. So uh, even if there's some critique of uh, Biden, which is uh, well earned, and we're the first ones to do that. And we've taken a lot of heat for doing that. Sad day for you, our jobs to report the news if you want us just to cheerlead for Biden. But we give you the context that uh, his picks are usually a thousand times better than Trump's. So in fact, we did that earlier today with Janet Yellen, a tre- as Treasury Secretary. Uh, not in this case. And so I'm not saying that Blinken is any of the horrible people that, that Trump picked. I'm sure Blinken's a perfectly not good guy, nice guy. I'm sure you'd like him if you met him in person. Not crazy, so I'll give I'll give him all that, and a very normal part of the establishment. So nobody's going to freak out over it. But the problem is Biden's foreign policy is that of the establishment, and that is not that much better than Trump's. So this is where now Trump was more hostile towards China, but. The establishment is more hawkish in general, more militaristic in general. 
And so I, I would say that there are big red flags here. And so I'm less worried that we had somebody in, in the inside the China's equivalent of the CDC. I think that kind of cooperation on a medical side is good and scientific side. Uh, but, but I'm more worried about, um, and let me make a distinction here as I explain this. Think tanks are getting funded oftentimes by foreign governments, uh, including by the way, Japan funding a lot of the think tanks and Japan not uh, friendly with China. So they're gonna push towards a more antagonistic position with China and more weapon sales towards Japan. Think tanks are also funded by defense contractors. So if it's not a progressive think tank, you should rip up all of their papers and light them on fire because they're generally con jobs trying to get us into more wars so that their defense contractor and foreign government benefactors could make more money or get what they want. So I've got no interest in that in, in that total and utter trash, okay? So in the yeah, case of Blinken yeah. though, I just wanna clarify, he's that group Westex is actually strategic consultants. So. That's more lobbyists than think tank. Uh, technically, they're not lobbyists to get around some voluntary lobbyist rules that Obama did and Biden is gonna do, but it's total BS. They're definitely lobbyists. And so they're part of the entire establishment yeah. military industrial complex, and they got paid by a lot of those same people. So they, there will not be great foreign policy. It, yes, we'll get back together with our allies and all the normal positive things. But we'll go back to being way more militaristic and aggressive in a way that is not warranted by the facts. Yeah, so Jing, thank you for um, you know making that distinction because uh, the distinction is important when you consider uh, the types of regulations pertaining to disclosing your funders. And so, with various think tanks that have been releasing studies right about how the United States needs to militarize Asia in order to control the rising threat of China, like. They have to disclose like which private contractors, um, which foreign governments are involved in funding those think tanks and funding those studies. When it comes to this, um, you know, consultant group that was uh, founded by Blinken, um, the funding you, you get a little bit of information, but it's a little more murky. Um, but I wanted to give you some of the information that we do know, so you kind of understand why. I have kind of a sour take on not just Blinken, but also Jake Sullivan, who's likely to be Biden's national security advisor. He was a former Hillary Clinton aide and a Biden senior advisor. And then Michelle Flournoy is also considered to be a favorite for Secretary of Defense. She was a former Obama Defense Department official. I mentioned those names because they're relevant to the details I'm about to give you regarding West exec advisors. So after leaving the Obama administration, Blinken and Flournoy, okay, again, Flournoy is the one who's being considered for Secretary of Defense, founded West Exec Advisors, a secretive consulting firm whose motto has been, and this is true, this is true, this is, this is their motto, bringing the situation room to the boardroom. That's amazing. No, no, you guys, that's amazing. Like, they just say it out loud. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to get the situation room very closely tied with the boardroom, duh, investments, that's what we do. Let me give you more. Last week, two board members from Raytheon joined a small group to brief President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris on national security issues. One of the two Raytheon board members, Robert Work, has also worked for West Exec. Flournoy has also served on the board of defense contractor Booz Allen Hamilton, or Booz Allen Hamilton. Um, now, one third of the members of Biden's transitions uh, Department of Defense Agency review team were most recently employed by quote, organizations, think tanks or companies that either directly receive money from the weapons industry or are part of this industry, according to reporting from in these times. And then one other um, tidbit for you guys, uh, April Haynes is also being considered. Uh, she helped the Obama administration 
administration design its disastrous and cruel drone program, she's likely to get a post in Biden's administration as well. That's so again, all incredibly important foreshadowing into what the Biden administration is gonna be like when it comes to foreign policy. And at the end of the day, defense contractors don't care whether there's a Democrat or Republican in the executive branch. All they really care about is utilizing either these consultants or these think tanks to push further militarization, further conflict abroad. And again, this pivot to Asia began under the Obama administration. Obama was very much influenced by something known as Project 2049. They wanted to militarize Asia as much as possible, including selling weapons to India and Japan. And that policy has just continued, that influence has continued throughout the Trump administration. In fact, Trump sold a record amount of weapons to Japan under his watch. And it's likely to continue under the Biden administration. Yeah, well, breaking news, Avril Haines is going to be the director of national intelligence. So that's getting nice, done. Nice, great. All right, okay. And so, of course, mainstream media reaction to that was, oh, that's so amazing and historic. She's the first woman director of national intelligence. She designed the program to do extrajudicial killings through drone strikes, including signature strikes where we had we didn't even know who we were killing. It was if you're wondering yeah, what that so is, it's been a long time. A signature strike is, hey, we have information that a bad guy might have used that cell phone at some point. We don't know who's using it now, but we have the signature of that cell phone. So let's just blow up the house that it's in. That was the program she authorized and built. It also killed American citizens without ever asking for any kind of verdict on them. So that's what's extrajudicial killings that was done under Obama. Yes, we reported on that at the time. We're gonna report it on it under Biden if they go back to doing that. And so, no, I'm not celebrating that she's the first woman in that role. I don't care what kind of identity politics you slap onto it. It makes it no better at all. Uh, and and so, guys, we're all outraged by some of this stuff. But to, you have to understand something. The reason most of the media never covers it is because in Washington, both for the media and for the corporate Democrats and Republicans, they think it's the most non-controversial thing they've ever heard. They're like, of course, boardrooms should decide what happens in the White House. Of course, they think it's oh, Biden is going to meet with board members of Raytheon to hear what we should do with our national security. They think that's the most natural, obvious thing they've ever heard. No, Raytheon is in the business of starting wars for profit. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they, it's, they claim, oh well, I, we don't, you don't necessarily have to start a war, but you guys make money from us buying more weapons, which are used in wars. So you literally make a profit by building those weapons. There's no question you want us to buy more of them. There's no question you're massively biased. And the idea that all of Washington accepts, well, obviously every president should take their marching orders from a private corporation whose business is war, is insanity. But they don't see it as insanity, they see it as perfectly normal. And if you're wondering, what, you know, Anna keeps saying pivot to Asia. What does that mean? That means pivot our military to Asia so that we can start hostilities. So that even if we don't start a war, the Raytheons and the Booz Allen Hamiltons of the world can turn around and say, well, just to be safe, we need to build more and more and more weapons. Right now, we used to have a 10 to 1 lead on China on weapons. It's down to a 3 to 1 weapon lead. Let's crank that back up. Gimme, gimme, gimme money, 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 money. No one should ever listen to board members from Raytheon in making national security decisions. But in Washington, they think it's negligent if you don't allow private defense contractors to dictate our national security. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.